Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I am a die-hard VS Code user. I have been using it now for probably two years. I'd have to check to get the exact dates, but I wasn't always a VS Code user. I used to use Atom before VS Code, and of course Atom was superseded by VS Code. Before Atom, I used Sublime Text, which is all to say that I'm loyal to my text editors until something better comes along. There might be something better that has come along. Uh, there's this company called Panic. Uh, they make amazing Mac software. Uh, back in my FTP days, if you remember what those were, um, they had one of my most used apps called Transmit, which was the best FTP client on the Mac. And they also had a text editor called Coda, that was also pretty good, but I was still in the Sublime, Te Sublime Text 2 camp at that time. But this past week, they've been hyping it for a long, long time. Uh, Panic released their brand new text editor called Nova. And I was curious if it was better than VS Code. So I downloaded it on my computer, and that's all that I've done. I was about to play around with it and use it, but I figured it'd be more fun to share my thoughts about Nova while I'm using it for the first time to try to answer the question, is Nova a VS Code killer? Let's start with the Nova homepage. Here it is, and I must say, it is one of the prettiest pages I've seen in a long time. It has this really cool effect, parallax effect as I scroll around, but what's even really cool about it is if I hover over here, we go into light speed. Whoa, okay, 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 calm down. That was way too fast, blah, 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 whoa. Uh, I mean, it's a marketing page, right? So it can tell you all the things that it can do. Why'd you jump down on me there? Uh, wait, stop jumping. So it's a powerful, let's just keep scrolling. Uh, showing all the powerful editor tricks. Now, here's the deal. I'm sure that Nova is going to be pretty and very Mac-like to use. Frankly, if it doesn't at least have a few features that I depend on with VS Code, like TypeScript support, uh, being fast, I'm sure it'll be fast, it's a native Mac application. If it doesn't have some of those things, then it's just a non-starter, frankly. And I know they're putting a lot of work into it. It's a paid text editor, whereas VS Code is free. So um, it's a very high bar to pass, frankly. It's a little unfair that VS Code's bankrolled by Microsoft and can just develop and release it for free forever. Whereas Panic is just this fun indie Mac app developer. So here's Coda, the old uh, Nova, and there's Transmit, my oft-loved Transmit. It's still good. But this, they've been hyping for a long time and it has extensions. So I'm sure I'll be playing around with some extensions as well. So it does have a TypeScript extension, prettier, yes, length. Yes, I would say that those are by far table stakes for a, for a editor for me. Prettier support, TypeScript support, and yes, length support. Settings, okay. So I've installed Nova locally and I promise to you, all I've done is open it up and then closed it because I was like, this is gonna make a great video. And I don't know, <laughs> I haven't recorded it yet. So this is real time. Let's see how it goes. Um, nice little splash screen uh, with space for all my projects. Let me open up my uh, website. Show up my website. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes, I'll put my uh, Gatsby website. And here we have the interface. Never seen before. You can see I downloaded it a couple days, uh, almost a week ago, and that's why I have 22 days left. And I have here the website where there's settings for the website. I can choose different colors for it. The default syntax is, I guess, HTML, index stuff. I always like looking at the settings of stuff to see what's available. Built-in static web server, that's pretty cool. Tasks, I don't, so this is actually what, one thing that I saw on the page is this task support where, where is it? I saw it somewhere. The workflow, ah, here. Yeah, you can add tasks, a custom task. You can actually add support for commands from Node. 
if you want to. Yeah, just like that. So um, for my project here, the default command is start for develop. So if I were to go here, add a task, let's do a run. Uh, we'll do JavaScript. Sure. I'll just do yarn start. Whoa, fancy. And I'll hit done. So if I click this up here, does that do stuff? Great. Non zero. Yarn start. That's real helpful. Off to a great start. Where's my terminal? If I want to bring that terminal, new local terminal. Huh, right here. A yarn start works here. So what you're complaining about in that custom task? I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. Things are building. What else did it say to do? Run shell script. MPX serve. I could try it just having it be a shell script. That works for me. Let's kill that. Website. Let's make it a shell script. Do this little shebang. And we'll do that right there. So let's try this custom task again. Seems like it's getting a little bit further this time. I don't know what it's doing. What does this do? Left sidebar, right sidebar. Oh, to change the layout for that. What's this thing do? Whoa, that's cool. Document. Let's make a new document. Make a file browser. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, just get access to everything. Oh, here's kind of cool. You can connect to FTP. Just kind of having transmit built in. That's pretty neat. This task is still running. Uh, remote terminal, local terminal, that's what I had before. Yep. Cool. So that seems to be running. If I were to go to my local host, is it, what is the port for it? I don't remember what I had as the port. Uh, let's just forget that because that's not a thing I really want to worry about right now. Just run yarn start here. This is too high, my monitor. Lower yourself. Okay. Getting things started, and oh, it's 8,000. So that command might have been working. I don't know. Here's my website working. I don't blog as much as I should anymore. It's so sad. I have you on the YouTube channel just to chat with, but my blog has very been neglected. But that's not a thing that you need to worry about yourself right now. Uh, actually, let's, let's try this actually one more time while I poke around. Let's try running this task one more time while, while it's running. Here's a readme. There's some content. Here's how uh, Markdown is rendered here by tech stack. Nice and pretty. Things here. Got some, uh, what is this? Oops. What happened there? Did I kill this by accident? I guess so. Did the wrong shortcut. I mean, this is an editor, right? I don't really see it being any different. I can open files. Let's open a uh, layout. Let's do the nav. So here's React as it's displayed. Looks pretty enough to me. Where's my loading? Oh, look, it works. Hey, it's running. That's cool. That's good. What does this eyeball do? Whoa, a preview internally. Stop that. Stop it. That's pretty cool. A little built in preview, which is just a file. If it was just raw HTML, that'd be nice. In this case, I want to say you can't oh, see this is what I love about Mac apps, just how pretty that is. But I can go here and I can say bananas. And then that's updated right there. Nice. Uh, that's, oops, it's not really being pretty printed. Let's actually do this right here. We have this. It's doing a little git just like VS Code does. This is showing me that I have some changes here. Oh, look at that. Nova configuration. That is some fancy stuff right there. Uh, I mean, this is pretty, right? This is very pretty. It's very Mac-like. I don't know what a clip is. I know what uh, the hierarchy is of this, which is a hard thing to do with Mac, with a React application, searching globally, remote destinations for FTP. 
And that's pretty cool. I'm curious about these extensions that they were talking about. The extension library. So let's install some extensions, shall we? Prettier. And TypeScript. And env. And eslint. And that's good for now. Those are definitely the ones that I use the most. So let's see here. We got env. This is very VS Code like this interface. Like I feel right at home here. Like this is very much the same. Prettier as well. Preferences, format on save. What is all this stuff? Oh, these are categories of uh, extensions and TypeScript. Is there ways to customize it? How do you... What the hell happened there? Oh, these are the categories? Okay. Go to the categories. And then, oh, here's preferences. So very small preferences for all these things. I guess they're just trying to make this. This is the parcel of editors, I guess. But now, where's my edit? So we have down here, the file edit. Now when I save it, I would, oh, there it goes, it formatted it, cool. It took a little bit, right? If I do this and I save it, yeah, there you go. So pretty much working as expected. So I'm saving it and things are being done there. Uh, this should give me an ESLint warning, which I was curious how it would show me. I guess it's not gonna give me an ESLint warning. Uh, let's do this instead. Let's do div. We got something being yelled at me. Uh, this is a TypeScript error. This is pretty. Look at that. Footer has no corresponding closing tag. This is throwing me an error. It's declared, but its value is never read. Uh, here, there's more errors as well. Look at that. How nice and pretty. Everything's still compiling. Yep. I mean, honestly, that's kind of what I use my editor for, TypeScript VS Code. Um, you Can I, oh, that's interesting. So one thing that I use a lot with VS Code is being able to commit multiple lines. So here, if I copy this, just add some more things changing. So now when I go here, it's not, no diff support, right? I'm not seeing any way to do a diff of things. What the hell is this clips? Add a clip. Oh, like a shortcut. Got it, got it. So like, you know, okay, I don't care about that, go away. Never got used to using shortcuts. I mean, yeah, this looks like a thing that would work. Uh, prettier is working, TypeScript's working. Oh, environment specific configuration files, that makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, doesn't look drastically different than VS Code. I'm not sure how else you can change things. Uh, does it do block folding? It's definitely the first, whoa, what is this? Extension source quit unexpectedly. That's good. That's good, I like to break things at that point. Oh, this is cool, expand. Oh, this is, this is actually very pretty. All the layers, it's like stacked on itself, which actually makes a lot of sense, this rainbow of indentations is also very pretty. So you can contract this. That's actually a really nice UI, which will be definitely stolen by VS Code somehow, either by an extension or otherwise, but that's a very pretty intuitive UI to show the uh, code folding, to like just get things out of the way if you want to. That's very pretty. Of course, Command Plus makes things bigger and smaller, which is what I would expect. What else is there to do? I mean, it's, it's an editor, right? There's not much else to do. I'll go back to posts. Things should be formatted as expected. It has it expanding for multiple things. It's being edited here. Stage. Oh, this is how you're staging it. Yeah, I like this interface a lot for doing that. I wish there was diff support. Like, I don't see a way for me to see what's actually changed, which I can imagine is coming in some future version. But it's a little bit limited there. You can stop running. You're you're chill. Um, edit, file, holy banana, open quickly in symbols, uh, layout, okay, oops, whoop, how do I do, how do I do like the fuzzy search when I want to find everything, open, 
quickly into Command Shift O. Eh. Or you just do Commando. Nope. What is it? Open quickly, Shift Commando. Shift Commando. Ah, there we go. What the hell? Oh, all these other things. Yeah, this is kind of like the uh, action bar. That is one thing that VS Code does really well with their action bar, where you can just also do commands in here, which is really great for discovering things. Is there a command bar? Command palette. There you go. Command Shift P. Yeah. Command Shift P. Yeah. Run. Open. Yeah, this is cool. This is very pretty. I mean, one thing you cannot deny here is that this is by far, by default, much prettier than VS Code. Language modes in here, um, spaces, what does this button do? No selection. Oh, that's cool, giving you a selection right there. Yeah, that's kind of it. I feel like I kind of poked at it a good amount. Extensions library, what other extensions do they have? Uh, if I go home, themes prettier yeah this is pretty nice this is definitely competitive with vs code uh it's definitely in the same realm of it uh go to definition that is fancy this isn't a typescript project though if i'd open a typescript project which is this one vody uppy a little sneak peek for you here give me a typescript file whoa command click no, command click, no command click. I want to go to file, go jump to definition. No, no jump to definition. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, discard changes, what has been changed? See, I can't see what's been, been changed because there's nothing there. All right, I don't know, oh shit. Is that a work in progress? Did I just lose some work? I think I might have. Whoops, mistake there. Well, that, as far as I can tell, new project with new filter, project artwork, yeah, okay. I get it, I got it. New project, yep, same thing. Okay, That's, uh, that is absolutely Nova, right there, right there. So that was Nova by Panic. Um, I think it was about what I expected. Uh, probably a little bit better than I expected. VS Code has had such a long time to mature and grow its ecosystem with extensions and plugins. It's very hard to beat, but in terms of a V1 for Nova, this is pretty impressive. And if it was free, would I switch to it? Probably not, just because I'm so used to VS Code and I don't see this doing anything better by default, but for those that do prefer native Mac apps that are probably faster by default, I'm sure it'll definitely use less memory than VS Code, that's for sure, then this is definitely a great option for you. And honestly, it's great seeing indie companies putting out text editors nowadays, which is a very hard, uh, arena to fight in, especially with VS Code that has essentially unlimited funding to just work on it forever because Microsoft money. That was fun to do. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you did like this video, subscribe. I have more of these videos coming at you all the time and I look forward to hearing your thoughts down below. What editor do you use right now? Is it VS Code? Because it's usually VS Code. Does this entice you at all to switch to it? Let me know. With that, I will see you again in the next video. Stay happy, keep coding.